always like to tell people here at the aquarium, the ocean doesn't start here on the edge of Monterey Bay. The ocean starts on your roof and in your yard and in your home. We have a lot of control over what happens around our homes. So just reading labels makes a huge difference and think, well, I don't know if I want that to be in the ocean water when I go to the beach. If that's true, then don't buy it and uh, use it around the house because it will be in the ocean faster than you know it. If you say pollution, people have visions of oil on the water, plastics floating around, and it's really the pollutants that are unseen that we probably need to be thinking about and need to be more aware of. And, and for example, you might think about the plastics floating in, in the water, but as those plastics degrade, the chemicals that they generate have some pretty insidious effects. A lot of the breakdown products from those plastics can be uh, hormone mimics. And so as fish and other animals absorb those, it plays with their endocrine systems and, and their reproductive ability. Every time you take old pharmaceuticals and flush them down the drain, a lot of those things may pass through a sewage treatment system without being totally removed. So as a result, when that flows out into a waterway or eventually into the ocean, there may be remnants of some of those pharmaceuticals now building up in seawater. That's something you would never think about until we start to see changes in fish or invertebrates. It's like, wow, what's causing that? And you start to drill down into it and it might be impacts from some of these more obscure pollutants. There's some good solutions out there for many of these problems if we're willing to take the time to do things the right way so that there isn't a long-term impact.